Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. We're gonna be talking about how do chickens mate and everything you need to know. Before we get into that, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel because that's how we continue to grow our following and continue to put out great content for you all. Also, be sure to subscribe to our website. If you subscribe using the link in the description below, you will receive a free ebook on 10 best egg laying chickens in a deep description and guide for each breed. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. So cockerels dancing and chasing the girls around the yard are a sure sign that the warmer months are here. When the chickens mate, games begin baby chicks are on the horizon. Although some of the antics that may go on may seem amusing to us, mating is a severe occupation for your chickens. Only the strong would survive in the wild. This instinct drives so many behaviors. So what exactly is involved in getting that egg fertilized? Now, it's more complicated and devious than you might think. So sit back and delve into romancing the hen. Let's start with common rooster and hen mating behaviors before looking at the actual mechanics of mating. So rooster behavior. Roosters think about mating just about all year round because it's their job. They have to carry on the breed, so he must have as many chicks from his ladies as possible to continue the flock. The behavior associated with mating and breeding really ramp up in the springtime, and you'll see courtship behaviors much more frequently than in the cooler months. He will become very attentive to the girls, tidbitting them to get them interested in what he has to offer in the way of food. Tidbitting involves finding a special tasty morsel or an insect for the chosen hen then he will call her over indicating the special treat by bobbing his head pecking at the treat and clucking much like a mother hen. This behavior may not lead directly to mating at the time, but the hen will remember his attentiveness. He is creating an impression. Any other roosters that hang around in the hope of enticing some hens will be chased off. And if necessary, chest bumping and fighting might ensue. Usually the submissive rooster will back off, run away to fight another day. The dominant roo will do everything he can to prevent the secondary males from mating with his flock. But at around three years old, a rooster starts to feel his age and may be challenged by younger and stronger birds. The secondary boys will resort to all sorts of tricks to lure a female into a tryst. Tidbitting, however, is by far the favorite and seems to work well. Another trick is the rooster dance. The rooster dance entails dropping one wing to the ground and shuffling around the hen he selected to mate with. The wing facing the hen will be dropped to the ground while he dances around her, showing his interest. After reaching the rear of the hen, he will try to hop aboard to mate with her. Some roosters don't even bother with the whole courtship thing and then get straight down the business. Out of nowhere, they'll just run over and hop on the hen. Once on top of the hen, he will begin treading. This helps him find his balance. He will also grab her comb or head and neck feathers to steady himself. And don't be alarmed at the appearance of the mating process. In most cases, it looks more violent than it is. It's an awkward looking procedure because it appears though the hen is getting attacked by the rooster. Now, in most cases the rooster is gentle enough for the hen to tolerate the breeding ritual's roughness but now and then there's an aggressive rooster who injures the hen keep an eye on this guy and make sure your hens don't get beat up by him over time chickens mate and hen behavior when the springtime rolls around the hen's hormones go into top gear in nature, this means the associated behaviors of finding a suitable mate, nest making, laying, and sitting on her eggs until they hatch. In many hen breeds, this instinct has almost been bred out of them, so they don't waste time and energy in being broody. However, there are still many good breeds that will happily turn broody during the summer months. Also, it's worth mentioning here that not all hens run true to their expected broodiness. Rhode Island Red are not renowned for broodiness, but this is the second year that I've actually had two of them as mothers, and they do a fine job. The first part of mating is finding a suitable male. If there's only one rooster for the flock, then he's a lucky guy. However, if there are more than a couple of roosters, then the mating game can get devious and nasty on occasion. However, the females aren't easily fooled. Research shows us hens can compare roosters, who has the best comb and shiniest feathers. She will choose to mate with this fellow that fits the specifications she has in mind. Apparently, a bright red comb and waddles really do it. The hens also judge the suitor's ability to find food, care for the flock, and treat the hens well. Therefore, hens may express a preference for mates based not only on their looks, but abilities. Hens are fickle on occasion, accepting foods and tidbits from any rooster, but will not necessarily mate with 
any of them. Although one rooster may be the alpha male, if a hen does not like him, she will not be compliant with the mating ritual and may never mate with him at all. If she is compliant with mating, she will squat or crouch, dropping her head and body lower and spreading her wings slightly to indicate receptiveness. You can see this behavior sometimes. For example, if you reach out to touch a hen, she will squat for you. Once the hen is sitting on her egg, she will lose all interest in mating and chase off the rooster if he advances her. This behavior will continue until she releases her brood anywhere from six to 10 weeks on average. After that, the rooster's advances will not be welcome and she will let him know uncertain way. Our backyard hens are spoiled in that they already have nesting spots available, ready, made, and safe. So although taking over the nesting box may not be what you desire, it's best to leave her there until she has hatched the chicks, then move them. If you can move them to a broody box once they've hatched, she's unlikely to desert them. In addition, a broody box will ensure they aren't trampled in the coop or attacked by other hens. It also ensures that they receive the correct protein intake for growth and development. Now let's talk about the mechanics when chickens mate. Once the rooster has hopped the board and has himself well situated, he will dip his tail down to the side of the hen's tail and deliver the cloacal kiss. Once the mating is done, he will usually move away while she shakes her feathers out and resumes normal business. So what is a cloacal kiss, I hear you ask? A rooster doesn't have a penis, just a tiny bump called a papilla inside his cloaca. It is via this papilla that the sperm is delivered to the hen. The rooster may mate between 10 to 30 times per day, depending on his ability and enthusiasm. His sperm load is greater in the morning when he can deliver anywhere between 100 million and 5 billion sperm. That's an awful lot of swimmers, but the mechanics of getting the sperm into the hen's cloaca are tricky. At the same time that the rooster delivers the sperm and the kiss, she must avert her cloaca or vent so that the sperm are directed up to the waiting eggs. Once inside the oviduct, the sperm will go on to fertilize the egg of the day. The sperm will also be collected in sperm pockets located within the walls of the oviduct. The stored sperm is viable for four to five days and is quite capable of fertilizing successive eggs. Now let's talk about common problems that can happen when chickens mate. Sometimes roosters can be a little rough like we mentioned. However, the usual array of damage is minor usually, such as feather loss and breakage. Loss of feathers and red irritated bald spots are a good indication that the hen is a favorite. Often she will have a small bald area on the top of her head, just behind the comb. This is where he will grab her feathers in his beak. The area that usually suffers the worst is the back where his claws can rake over the feathers and skin, sometimes causing skin abrasions. Usually these are fairly superficial and can be easily treated, but sometimes his claws can do significant damage to the skin, which would rip it open and cause problems. What we do is we use a salve containing comfrey and plantain to soothe and heal reddened areas. But if there are open areas, their skin should be treated with antibiotic ointment if needed. Now, if you notice that your hen's starting to get a little ragged over their backs, you can fit them with the saddle. These items certainly do save the hen some wear and tear on her exposed skin. A saddle is simply just a barrier where between the feathers and the rooster's talons, it's fitted under the wings to keep, keep it in place. And it certainly cuts down on damage to the hen's back from overly amorous roosters. Now, the skin under the saddles should be checked and treated daily. It does get hot and moist under the saddle, a perfect environment for bacteria, lice, and mites to thrive in. If the damage is more severe with open wounds and bleeding, you'll have to remove the hen from the flock for a while and treat the wounds with soap, water, and antibiotic ointment. Deeper wounds may need to be stitched. And in these cases, you should consult your veterinarian. If you cannot afford a vet, you can sometimes get the wound to close together using butterfly type band-aids and make sure to be very diligent about checking the wound for infection. With a rooster causing these types of injuries on several hens, it may be best to lock them up until the girls heal. Then when he's released, monitors behavior if he's consistently rough and causing damage it might be time to think about another rooster so when chickens make, there can be rooster attacks. Occasionally, if there are competing roosters, there may be sometimes significant wounds inflicted among them. Combs can be ripped and will bleed profusely. You'll need to catch and treat the victim. Usually the pressure applied to the comb will stop the bleeding after several minutes. Using a small pad or tissue, pinch the damaged comb between your fingers firmly. You can also apply styptic powder to slow down the bleeding. 
some folks use baking powder or cornstarch to do this. The damaged rooster will need to be separated until the damage is healed. Rooster attacks can happen during the mating process. This is rare, but it has been known to happen. Most often this happens when there aren't enough hens for the number of roosters in the flock. So most roosters are happy to share the same space if they each have enough hens of their own. The dynamics of dual flock farms can be challenging, especially during the spring when breeding is at an, an all time high. You'll see some roosters trying to steal hens from neighboring flock by doing his rooster dance and shuffling around her toward his current flock. With that being said, hens are pretty attached and loyal to their chosen roosters and hens rarely change roosters. Let's talk about fertilizing eggs. Another problem with mating that can occur is actually getting your chicken's eggs fertilized. Some of the fluffier breeds, such as Wyandotte's and Orpington's, can have a difficulty collecting the sperm because of all the fluff. A quick and simple solution is to trim away a lot of the bum fluff so her cloaca is more accessible to the male. It doesn't look stunning and if she's a show bird she won't be on the stage anytime soon but if you want baby chicks this is the easiest way to go generally the whole process goes smoothly without interference from a keeper but now and then an overly amorous rooster can damage hens quite badly usually it's the young roosters do the inexperiences on their part some roosters will actually take a turn at sitting on the eggs while mama takes a bath and snack but of course he will still guard and care for the rest of his girls if you have such a rooster keep him good roosters are hard to find well that's going to do it for us here at the happy chicken coop thanks for listening if you find our content interesting if you learn something new please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the youtube channel that's how we continue to grow our channel so we can continue to put out great content for everyone that watches with that i hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon